hi everyone so today i'm i'm kind of doing this a little bit different um <laughs> i asked ChatGPT to give me a list of topics to discuss about this topic because otherwise i'm gonna start being unkind um the nature of this podcast is incredibly significant to me right now um because I've just experienced the worst betrayal of my life. Um, And I'm angry. I'm going to be talking about female rage. Um, So I've I've had this thought a while ago to discuss this topic. And it's something that I'm really fascinated with and kind of holds a special place in my heart because I grew up as a very angry child. Um, And rage has always been something that's been suppressed for me, my mother is very calm and now she knows not to do this. But as a child, she would often tell me, don't get angry, don't get angry. And that just led to me just penting up all of this anger. Um, And yeah, no, it would come out in not good ways. Um, So I have worked on it. I am in therapy. I'm no longer an angry person. Like, I really... It's really funny because um, in the past, like, three days that this, um, like, situation has happened, um, I've really been trying to channel my anger and my upset into my fashion and, like, my aesthetic choices because I always find that that's, like, a vessel for me to express how I'm feeling. Like, if I look how I feel I find it easier to convey my emotions I I just see like fashion and beauty as a way for me to convey something you know like I I have a hard time making my emotions sound believable because I'm so analytical like I can explain to you my emotions but like people will quite often be like you don't seem sad or you don't seem this or that and it's like I, I think I just have like I'm quite detached where my emotions are concerned. Like, I still feel them and experience them, but I don't think they are portrayed the way that people understand. So I've always used fashion as a way to convey that. And one of my friends the other day was like, why are you dressing like a goth? And I was like, funny that. Um, I'm really angry. Um, And I've just always seen that as a way to, like, help. And it's, it's upsetting to me because my aesthetic is typically like it changes but it's typically very white and light and like coquette like I'm very um light in my color palettes and things like that um and I think that reflects in how I feel a lot of the time I feel very light a lot of the time like I dress how I feel and when I'm dressed like you can always just tell how my mood is based on how like what my outfit is um it's a really good indicator and recently I just feel like I'm in mourning honestly um and it was really funny because I almost feel like I kind of predicted it like I started a few days ago I started dressing this way um I went out to see a friend and I wore like a long black skirt and like a white shirt and I was telling her I was in mourning (laughs) and I didn't know what what I was mourning but I just felt I was in mourning and and then two days later <clears throat> um, I uncovered some news um, and it. I was like, oh, perfect. Um, <laughs> I was actually, um, I was on my way home from work and then I had to be back there in an hour for a work's leaving drinks before I go on holiday. Um, and I had my whole outfit planned out in my head. Like it was like a white flowy dress. It was summer. It was, I ended up wearing like, <laughs> a burgundy red bodysuit and black platform Mary Janes and doing like winged eye I haven't worn winged eyeliner in like a year and now all of a sudden <laughs> the winged eyeliner and the coal is coming out and uh, yeah um so I think my my female rage is primar- primarily yes expressed through my fashion choices and and that I think is quite significantly to do with my neurodivergence and not being able to um interpret emotional signals very well 
Um, so I kind of try and... I think people can't really interpret mine and I can't really interpret theirs. So I find that dressing the part makes them... It, it helps people to understand me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I kind of wanted to discuss betrayal for a minute because I feel like female rage is and if you're a man don't even bother with this podcast i don't want to hear anything that you have to say if you don't agree i don't care i don't want to know um this isn't for you so yeah betrayal is i think such a main stem of female rage specifically if we look through history at all the times that women have been betrayed it is a serial phenomenon that women are constantly betrayed and then those betrayals are justified through outdated ideologies and it's just I'm fed up of it like the specific betrayal that has happened to me is particularly interesting because it relies so heavily on my gut instinct and I had said months and months and months ago that this specific situation wasn't right and I knew something was off and I was uncomfortable and I had expressed concern and I you know my emotions had been belittled during this time and oh no it it could never be that way it's not like that it's crazy like you're being crazy like don't be crazy and you know (laughs) I wasn't crazy I was right and I think that's another layer like a layer to add on top of this betrayal is that I'm so glad that I listened to myself and I gave back. I'm really sorry if I cry. Like, I'm really emotive right now. And, like, this is why I'm trying to channel this into a podcast and not, like, scream and shout at people that haven't hurt me, you know? Like, I don't like to bleed over people that didn't cut me. Um, However, the people that have cut me, I don't want anything to do with. So, I will be bleeding into this podcast. Um, So, apologies, because this may get, like, a little bit like sad um but yeah no so it's really like cutting to me how this is maybe one of the first times that I'd trusted myself and I'd said you know I am so sure that this is wrong and I'm so sure that this is is like something's wrong here and something's off and I'm glad that I trusted myself. And one of my friends said to me when I was talking to her about it, she was like, just be glad that your intuition was right. And I know I, I agree with that. And, and then another one of my friends said, like, that is a great point. However, just because your intuition was right, it doesn't mean that you don't have to grieve because you've been hurt. And I think for me, it's the combination of grief from being betrayed, but also another layer of grief from knowing you were right the whole time and then being proved right and usually being proved right is a good thing you know you want to be right and in this instance it is the most gut-wrenching feeling like it is literally as if someone has ripped my heart out of my chest and like put it in a fucking paper shredder like it's that just like that, that gut feeling of like I knew it and it just it makes you reconsider every single time that you were told otherwise or that you were told no it's not like that or you know it it's there's nothing going on there you know it it was a lie like and it makes you and do you know what's the sad thing is that this was something that I had so much confidence in and I had so much faith in the fact that this situation prior to obviously this other this betrayal had restored my faith in something that was such a trigger for me and like I had such a hard time being around men honestly like being around men like men are such a like a a real sensitive point for me and this specific person restored my faith completely in men and now it's gone and don't get me wrong, like, I have amazing male friendships, I do, like, I love, like, you know, Joe, I will literally, like, I will die on a hill for you, I would lay down in a fucking pool of molten lead for you, like, I adore that man, and I have other men in my life that are so great, but, like, romantically, I just don't believe that, like, honesty and, like, a good relationship is possible, like, I I can't imagine that to be the case, because, how can someone restore every ounce of faith that you'd lost and then just like rip it away like 
like it's so painful to me and I'm so upset that I'm so you know out of control of my emotions and I, I don't understand how to regain control and a lot of my friends have said like you can't control this and it's like I just don't want to lash out and I was saying to my mum and I was talking to her about it um I'm I'm very prone to going very cold like when I, I know a lot of girls will I guess I'm called females I don't like that word um a lot of girls will relate to this like when you get hurt that like ice kind of icy mindset of just like I don't give a fuck and I don't want to feel like that I used to do that when I was younger and like do you know this is another thing that I wanted to talk about when I was younger when I was like 17 16 whatever um and I would be hurt I would just completely close up like I used to like make this joke um that like you know in like the vampire diaries when they can like turn their emotions off like I literally could do that and I I never really understood it and a lot of my other friends could do it as well and we'd be like ha time to go off the rails ha but in the process you just end up hurting so many people because you're so detached and numb and you know you desensitize yourself to things and that wall goes up and you don't realize how painful that is for the people around you and as you know when I found out this news the other day I thought to myself like I can feel that like cold feeling coming back and it just made me feel so sad because I didn't want I don't want to be in that position again and I was talking to one of my friends about it and she was like either you were a teenager when that was going on like that's what teenagers do like you did the best you could with the information that you had and for those of you who don't know um or don't know me at all um like a bit of back law basically I was like severely groomed like I know this is like kind of oversharing but I don't really care it's kind of necessary um yeah I was like severely groomed by my boss um who works for um he works with children so you know like you can fill in the blanks there um Anyway, it's all kind of coming out the paperwork now. Like, I'm pretty sure there's, like, some... Like, the police are involved with him. Like, he is a bad man. Um, anyway, at this time when I was, like, going through this, I obviously closed up and, like, was so, like, cold. And, obviously, I start lashing out. You know, classic symptoms of, like, any kind of victim of, you know, assault or like grooming or abuse like any any kind of symptom of that that you can imagine I was portraying and I was lashing out and I was it was you know it was a cry for help and I remember just thinking to myself the other day like no one asked me like teachers or you know people that should have it should have been clear red flags people my own age is different because they they aren't qualified they don't have fucking qualifications in safeguarding but to all those teachers who told me that I was like the problem child when my sim- my symptoms, I don't know if symptoms, my behaviours were so classically in line with that of abuse, just goes to show it's like that other level of, another layer of female fucking rage where I was, I was the victim in a situation, but I was made, I, you know, I was being viewed as, as the perpetrator or the problem. And it was so obvious. And it just makes me think how many times in life are women taken advantage of or treated like shit or, you know, put in unsafe situations or made to do things that they're uncomfortable with. And then they act out as a as a very natural human result of those behavior and that trauma. And then they get punished you know when it's a cry for help and a big part of like my philosophy like one of um uh someone like in my life has a child and they're very um concerned about this child at the minute like this child is really uh like kind of going through it and I remember like I said like have you spoken uh like is there something going on and she was like well I don't know and I was like well to me like someone lashing out and someone acting up isn't I don't think people usually act out or or lash out for no reason and it's I just this is a hill that I will die on is women are not 
given the chance to speak about how they feel. They are just told that they're misbehaving. And, you know, this is classic throughout history of, like, female hysteria or, you know, women not being able to express themselves, nor being given the tools to effectively express themselves. We weren't really, you know, we weren't allowed into the schooling system until hundreds of years after men. Like, we weren't allowed to be educated. We weren't allowed to have an understanding of ourselves. And if we aren't given those tools to understand ourselves, how do you express us? How express us? How do you expect us to express ourselves? We're going to lash out in the only way that we know how, and that's going to be a primal instinct. Like, you know the primal urge is to rebel and we and then we get punished for rebelling there is i think that's a hornet there's a hornet that is by my car um sorry i'm getting sidetracked um yeah so i don't know i'm gonna start going through these there's 12 topics here i don't know if i'm gonna speak about all of them um so the first one is about how throughout history women's anger has been silenced or dismissed i feel like i've kind of you know discussed that and there's another point here about women who've been vilified and so um for those of you who don't know uh, about the story of Lilith I'm going to discuss her really briefly because she is like a really strong symbol of female rebellion and I think she's a really important thing to discuss if you are at all interested in Judaism or deity work um she's a really prominent figure she's basically Adam's first wife so if you don't know the story, um, I don't know how different it is in Judaism to in Christianity. Um, so don't quote me on that. Um, but before Adam and Eve, it was Adam and Lilith and they were both made from the soil. And apparently, so say Eve was made from impure soil, whereas Adam was made from pure soil. Uh, not Eve, Lilith, sorry. Uh, that's like the christian conditioning in my head coming out uh anyway so lilith was cast away or she was either cast away or she chose to leave one of the two because she wouldn't submit to adam apparently like when they were trying to like consummate the relationship uh she refused to lie under him like she was like i want to be on top which is great for her and he was like no like you will lie beneath me and she was like, no. And then she fucked off, basically. And then Ad, uh, Eve was made from his rib. So that's why I think in a lot of men's brains, they see women as an extension of themselves and, a, you know, a piece of property. The same way that you say it's your arm, it's your woman, you know. And I think that's why there's a lot of, um, like, classic, I don't know what the word would be, sexism, maybe. I don't know if sexism is the right word fucking patriarchal ideas i don't know in the in the bible um anyway so back to lilith she becomes outcast and then she is for hundreds of years revered as a demon um she's very closely tied to like female sexuality and liberation she's tied to like motherhood and a lot of those things but she also is posed as a threat quite consistently throughout history um to to baby boys like um in a lot of old scriptures they talk about um the need to have a pot with Lilith at the bottom um and that keeps her spirit in this pot so that if you are pregnant and you have a baby boy she can't kill the baby boy because apparently that was something that she used to do um and I started researching her after I broke up with my ex um just because I felt that I wanted to start to embrace my own like rebellion and like you know I'd always been kind of told that like I can't follow rules and I can't like you know people would be like you're not um I'm not an agreeable person, you know, and I kind of, instead of leaning away from that, I wanted to find a way to lean into it in a way that felt authentic to me instead of being ashamed of my own, like, self-expression. Uh, and she was a real solace in that, you know, sort of situation and helped me do a lot of uncovering my own issues in terms of how I view um, being told no and, like, 
<laughs> I really struggle to take direction from men. I do not believe them to be intelligent, unfortunately. Um, I just believe that women are the natural born leaders. You know, like men are so good at following orders. Like that's why men make great army people. Women, I think, are the natural born leaders and men should just follow. Like, I believe that they are great at giving doing tasks like that's why men like to be given jobs to do around the house like but women are the ones that fucking cook and they kind of i know i sound outdated but i'm just talking from like a patriarchal sense like cooking a meal is so much more difficult than fixing a wall like it's so there's so many more layers to it and elements and having to get things done at the right time and you know it's just a more complex activity and I will even say this like at my work there is a female chef and there is a male chef and that male chef he can't do it he just gets so stressed and he just like and he's been doing it for years and he still can't do it and this fucking 19 year old girl's waltzed in and she's just like what what are you complaining about like it's so easy um and yeah I just think like that throughout history like we've constantly been belittled we've constantly been vilified and we've constantly been told that we are not able to do things just because men don't think because they can't do it they think we can't do it but they also hold us to a lower standard than them so they think that we can't do anything like do you get what i'm saying it's like they they don't actually understand how complex we are like women are such complex beings like we have the ability to bring life into the world like we have portals in our stomachs that bring people into the planet and i i see women as an extension of the 5d and i see men as an extension of the 3d and i think both are necessary for uh a, a, you know a harmonious existence don't get me wrong like i'm not like an anti men girl at all uh currently i am just given like current events but i'm really not the sort of person that's like i hate men banish them like i think men are so great in so many things however i think that in a historical sense and a lot of men these days still hold these views they will never ever understand the power that we have because they can't comprehend that that is a possibility because they will never possess it themselves and you know it's like when they say like you shouldn't argue with someone who's dumb because they're never going to be able to comprehend the points that you're putting across it's the same thing um so the next point is about angry women being hysterical and you know how women are meant to be passive and nurturing and accommodating and i feel like this is really um prevalent because i never had a maternal instinct when i was growing up like i always remember i remember i went on this holiday and i met this boy called leo and he was like the, literally like the biggest patriarch you've ever met like he was so like your job is to provide uh me a baby and i will go and make money for you like that was it and i was like i just don't even know if i want kids and he was like you will and it's so funny because he was right like not about everything don't get me wrong but like i never wanted kids i never wanted to like do that thing and i don't know what happened like a few years ago i just started looking at babies and being like Oh, and I think it's literally like the chemicals, like the fucking oxytocin. I don't know what chemicals released when you have a kid, but whatever chemical it is in my brain is now telling me that babies are cute and that kids are cute. And it's funny because I do think that there are inherent masculine and feminine traits in women. And I think that it's really interesting to look at I would love to observe a group of men and women that haven't been socialized into gender norms and I don't know how that's possible because obviously you know every you kind of you have to be raised and I think a lot of gender norms are passed down subliminally like you don't even realize it's down to the the clothes that these that you put your children in and it's down to the color that you paint their room and the way that you throw them about and you know canalization is something that i've discussed many a time before on here and it's basically the way that men and women are boys and girls i'll say are treated differently like boys are more likely to be thrown around as babies whereas they're going to be more gentle with like a little girl and it's like 
are those differences innate and I have a I have a whole podcast on the nature nurture debate and it's I think I go into gender norms a little bit in that and about how you know certain and it's funny because it's obviously a cultural thing as well like certain cultures expect women to take on roles that other cultures would consider more masculine like I think um the the I know that the U.S like approach to dating is incredibly different to like in like the Balkan areas and like things like that like that is a very much more like traditionally feminine and masculine like you will provide for me I will be your like subordinate wife you know and whereas in like America and England it's a lot more like you know I'll date around kind of see what's right for me like you know if it works out it works out if it doesn't it doesn't and I don't know whether I follow that ideology because this is where I was raised or if that's what I agree with. And I just, I think it's really interesting. Like, do I think these things because I'm socialised into it? Or do I think these things because it's actually at my core what I believe? Um, so the next one, media representation. This is an exciting one. And this is the one that I wanted to discuss. So... I am going to watch Pearl tonight because I'm angry. Um, For anyone that doesn't know, Mia Goth is like the token screamer of right now. Like, she can fucking scream. Um, She's a very interesting actress because she's incredibly docile in her looks and her voice. She talks like a child. Um, I actually love her voice. But she has this, like, rage and fury inside of her. And the way that it comes out while she's acting is it it captures something that I think a lot of women can relate to or I I think that phenomenon is the breaking point um I think we as women have been socialized to withstand a certain amount of disrespect or tolerate a certain level of things that men are not expected to tolerate and I think Mia Goth specifically, don't get me wrong, you've got your Shelley Duvall's as well. Like I I see Shelley Duvall as as the the docile representation of fear. Whereas I see Mia Goth as the step after, you know, Mia Goth is after the fear has numbed you, that you start swinging the fucking axe, you know? Like it's that it's that progression of first comes the fear and then after that it's just like pure rage and (laughs) like I'm so sorry because uh, all I can think about is this one situation and like it's it's at the forefront of my mind so I'm sorry if if I'm making this like a little too personalized and I do apologize if this is coming across kind of unprofessional because I do hold this podcast like to a really I want to hold it to a really high standard and it means a lot to me and I don't want this to be a place where I just come and vent about my own personal problems I want it to be a space of learning and like a space where people can discuss ideas and I don't like it to be biased and I know that in this instance I am being incredibly biased and I I don't want anyone to take offense or think that it is fucking targeted I'm not gonna lie like this is definitely targeted but I'm I'm really trying to this is why I try to do these like fucking bullet points because I want this to be as educational as possible or as you know I want I want to give someone something to think about outside of just like me venting about like my personal problems um but yeah no I just like this this rage that she expresses touches a a part of well me specifically I know and I know a lot of other girls all they want is just once to just you know fucking go to a rage room like throw something around and and it's so funny to me that like male rage is so normalized and women lash out and then they get told that it's crazy or female hysteria or they get told that they're like you know they get put in a fucking mental asylum like they or anything could happen and they would just we just get punished and we get shunned and men can go out and get in fights every weekend and smash shit and punch walls and and it's just seen as a a classic token of masculinity and it's again it's unfair it's all unfair it's all biased towards men everything is biased towards men and you know I was I was literally saying to Daisy yesterday like I was like I feel like I want to go and buy some plates and smash them but then I also feel like I'd need to get a dustpan and brush because I'd want to I wouldn't want to leave a mess what man 
would think that way. I don't know a man, even the men that I love in my life, I don't think that they would consider the fact that they've left a mess because it is it has been conditioned into me as a woman to clean up everyone else's shit. I have to clean up my own and I have to clean up everyone else's. <laughs> like, I will not leave a mess on the floor, even if it's fucking shards of play. I won't because I have the foresight to think an animal could come over and hurt itself, a child could come over and hurt itself. A man would make the mess and then expect me to clean it up for him. <sighs> sorry (laughs) i'm so sorry oh the next one may get me fired um the next point is female rage in the workplace so okay the point says here and this is like i'm i'm actually probably going to get fired after this but that's fine the double standard where men's anger is seen as assertiveness while the woman's anger is seen as emotional instability this is so true you know they always call me dramatic at work they tell me i'm dramatic and they tell me blah 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 like you know I make a big deal out of everything and it's like no I just communicate my boss can't communicate like at all really and we've had discussions about this before and when I came back this year from uni I said this year we're not doing it like you're gonna talk to me like an adult we are gonna we're gonna speak to each other because I really struggle when people I would just so much rather you say to me like how it is even if you think I'm not gonna like it I'd like it more than just me having to decipher what you're trying to tell me and me and my boss got in a few arguments this year because I was like he he's very biased and it's like one rule for one and another for another and I will call that out and he cannot handle the fact that I call it out and he tells me I'm being dramatic I'm being hysterical I'm being this and it's like no I'm just reacting to a boundary that you are trying to violate to me it is a boundary that we all get treated the same in a workplace and you are actively going against that therefore there are consequences for that behavior and this goes back to the point i was making earlier when i was saying about how when we react to disrespect we're the ones that are penalized for it regardless of whether it was me as a child getting fucking punished for being groomed and me acting out for it or whether it was you know uh i don't know what her name was the girl that jumped in front of a horse to get us the vote like she got laughed at and and then it got us the vote like we have to make these huge egregious statements for you to listen to us and half the time it's kind of just a guessing game are you going to listen to us we don't know we don't know at what point you're going to choose to switch on your fucking rationality and listen to us because we're right and we know we're right and we can we we understand things in a different way and it doesn't mean that we're right or we're wrong over you it's just two things can exist and contradict each other at the same time it doesn't mean that they're both one's right and one's wrong you know and I think that's a really hard concept for men to understand is that I can say you know I don't agree there was almost a car crash there oh I don't agree with the way that you're you know handling this topic as a manager I do not agree with that however I as your you know employee i i think it's up to me to speak out about that however i'm not gonna you know i'm giving you i'm saying my bit because you know i'm I'm gonna say my bit and if i don't say my bit i'm gonna walk around and like you're gonna know either way you're gonna know like i'm not gonna hide it from you so why are you taking offense it's like i'm not the sort of person that can just like shut up and be quiet and just like move on with it and you know that so why hire me if you don't want that do you know do you get where i'm coming from it's like they can't have both they can't have the 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 mindset that they may be wrong or they may be disagreed with i think men really struggle to be disagreed with and i really actually quite enjoy to be disagreed with like i would love to hear people's reasons as to why that they don't agree with me because to me I'm secure enough in my own ideas that I don't need you to agree with me and I actually find it really interesting if you don't agree with me because it helps me to think you know oh like what's another perspective maybe I can change my philosophy on this like that's the way I see things and I think I don't have that ego in that sense of like I have to be right I have to be right because I don't think right and wrong exist like I think that's subjective Um, I'm going to stop talking about work now because I really think I'm on thin ice anyway. So, um, 
yeah, I just, I can't. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, so I'm going through these. I'm, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do one more and then I'm gonna stop because uh, otherwise I'm just literally gonna keep going and I'm, I may like break a few windows. I'm really like not an angry person and like the fact that I'm feeling anger in this way is like, it's almost funny to me because I see, I see human emotion um, as experience to have. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but um, there was a time in uni when I was like really butthurt over this guy. And I remember just being like, I love feeling like this, like sorrow. And like, I can listen to Lana Del Rey and I can like cry in my room and like, be so dramatic. And like, ugh. like, I don't know. I'm detached from emotion in that way. Whereas I view, I, I, I view like, it's almost like I view myself outside of myself and I watch myself doing it. And I'm like, this is exactly what a character would do in this situation. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but like when I, when I feel an emotion and I choose to um, hold on to it, because uh, if you don't know, an emotion actually only lasts in your body for seven seconds and you have the choice whether or not you cling to it. And if you choose to like bind to it, that's when it starts releasing more of those neurotransmitters that make you feel that emotion. Um, but you can choose to like actively disengage with an emotion. As hard as it is, it is possible. Um, but when I do choose to identify with an emotion, particularly a negative one, I try and I, I don't know. And it's funny because obviously people call, call me dramatic, but like I, um, I just something about the human experience and just living it and like exp like being being so angry and like passionate and like wanting to throw things around and wanting to cry and wanting to like scream into a pillow and like it's it's like romantic to me like it's 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 artistry like i don't know how to explain that and i know that sounds really weird and I feel this with every emotion I feel when I'm happy. I'm overly happy and I'm like, ah, like, I don't know. I just experience emotions in, like, a, a strange way to where, like, I I play up into my emotions. Like, I, I, I want to, like, almost, like, squeeze that neurotransmitter dry of, like, that life experience and, and like, just, like live it like live that moment and then like look back on it in a month when I don't care and be like oh yes I really like I really threw I like I remember when I was like 13 um uh my first boyfriend shout out Harry Strutt <laughs> he was a good guy um yeah I remember we broke up and I'd kept uh we went to see a movie together and this is back in the day when they'd give you like movie tickets because this was like I don't know how old am I this was like 10 years ago um and I remember I ceremonially went outside and burned it and I remember like looking up to the sky and being like I release it and like I'm, I'm no more like ah like I'm just I'm just a dramatic person by nature but I don't actually care that much like I don't know how to explain it like I know I know it sounds silly and I don't think I've heard anyone else talk about this before but I don't actually care it's just like I just do it because I think it's great for the plot and I don't like that saying, but it is true. Like, I view my life as one big video game. And, like, it, not no, not so much a movie, more like a video game, because, like, I'm in control. Um, and it's like, how do I make this game the funnest it can be? I live it. Like, you know, no movie was ever good when people weren't screaming and crying and, like, ah! like ups and downs. Like, it's so... It's so it's just like it gives me life to f like it, it makes me feel alive to feel these things and as much as they hurt like I'm, I'm kind of talking about it as if it's a positive thing but I view every experience as a positive experience because I'm aware that so many people won't get to experience the things that I'm experiencing like you know people that are refugees and people that are suffering in Palestine right now they don't get the luxury of crying because they've been betrayed by a boy that is that is a privilege to me having to hear what they go through me getting to cry over that is a fucking luxury compared to what they go through and I should I should you know 
I sh- honestly, I just see it in my head as like a like live it because you don't know when it's going away like you don't know like I would rather just cry myself to sleep and like feel like I'm burning inside and like say that I've lived it because when the day comes when I too become a refugee I'm gonna have some real fucking problems you know I'm gonna have some real problems and that'll give me something to fucking care about and you know and it's so important to me that I I live the life that I have been given because so many people would would die for the life that I've got and and I'm so privileged in that sense and we I think we don't view that like we don't view that and we just think like oh you know well like it's just another day or it's just another this or it's just another that and it's like no it's not like this is the last time you're gonna have this day you don't know what tomorrow brings you don't know like you don't know when you're going to lose someone you don't know when you're going to whatever like go and scream to them and like tell them that you love them and tell them that you miss them and like and like oh like just be emotive like I think everyone's so afraid of being emotive and I, I just think it's so important to be emotive because when the time does come if god forbid anything happens to this country I actually kind of wouldn't care like get me out but if the time came when I have to conserve my emotions and I have to for my safety you know these people in palestine for their safety they can't run around and scream at the top of their lungs they can't these people are in hiding these people are scared they're afraid and how lucky am i that i get to go and run around and scream about a fucking boy like what a luxury to have in this life that i can complain about something as fickle as men and not because my family being fucking blown to smithereens and like i'm sorry because i didn't i didn't want this to get political and like i feel like i'm gonna cry um but it's just to me it's like it's a priority thing of like what really matters like let yourself feel the emotion and then fucking let it go because it doesn't matter like to me i'm i'm emotive and i feel these emotions but they don't matter it doesn't matter it's just it's just another day and like that you know there's so much real shit going on in the world and so many people who have given their lives for real causes that have allowed us as women to live the way that we live today we should take full advantage of it because you never know like if you look at Afghanistan like they were so liberated and they were so free and now they're not they lost it all and like you never know when we could be next and I just think like you need to just you need to just experience things and take it positive or negative it's all an experience like everything as an experience is inherently positive you know if you view a negative experience as a lesson or as something to learn from you're turning it into a positive experience if you just live it and enjoy it and just like you know, you can go through the hardest time, like, I've gone through some terrible times, and I've, like, I've kind of experienced betrayal, like, quite a few times in my life from people that I've really, really cared about, not just men, like, women as well, and it's so painful, but I'm so grateful that I have the body that I have to be able to run around, like, I'm not bound by a wheelchair I'm mentally sound I can understand the fact that I can comprehend the ability to set a boundary and the fact that I can think to myself that's not right I have the ability to think for myself I have the ability to push someone away from me if they're getting too close like what a privilege and like I will use that until I do not have it anymore and I don't really care if you think I'm being dramatic because I'm using what like God has given to me And I just think that's so important. And all of these girls that are so ashamed of expressing yourself and being seen as dramatic, who gives a fuck? Like, it doesn't matter. Just do it. Just do it. Like, the the minute that you start being more dramatic, life will be more dramatic. Everything will be more fun. It's more intense. Like, I'm... It's just... It's so important. It's so important to me to just be raw in how you feel. And to those people... (laughs) that feel like they can't do those things or, you know, they're in the situation where they are scared to be authentic and scared to be, you know, they, they may be in danger of, you know, 
a man. Like, they, there are plenty of women who are at, you know, the hands of very dangerous men. And if I do not have the advice for you, other than if you can leave, then do. And I don't want that to sound, like, fickle and just, like, I'm glazing over it because I'm not. But there is so much life to live. Like, just please surround yourself with as many positive people as you can. Because one thing that this negative experience has made me realise is how many people, like, I have. And I've always kind of had this, like, negative core belief that I don't have many people in my life or, like, not many people like me. And, like... I can gladly say now that that is not true and that is such a fulfilling experience and that like makes me feel so secure and it's taken this negative situation for me to realise how secure I am in my relationships and that has has transformed it into this positive experience. Um, I think I need to stop talking now otherwise I think I'm going to explode. Um, But thank you guys so much for listening. I think this may be one of my favourite podcasts that I've ever made. So I'm going to plug it so hard, (laughs) even though it's probably going to get me fired, Um, but that's fine. Thank you guys. I love you and I will speak to you soon.